Hi everyone, my name is Mary Anderson. I'm the Director of Career Services at the College of St. Scholastica. I'm happy to be with you today virtually to share a little bit about career services, what we do, how you might connect with us, and then give you some tips and ideas from my perspective as you work on your uh, portfolio. Um, in the future, if you have additional questions or want to connect with us, I have the information on this slide. I will also have it on the very last slide. So you're welcome to reach out, me, out to me directly at man one at css.edu. You'll also see resumes at css.edu if you want to submit any documents for review. That's um, the site you'd use for that or the email you'd use for that. Uh, careers at css.edu if you want to set up an appointment. That's the easiest way to get that set up. And then our website, which just has lots of other good resources for you. In our office, just who we are. So again, my name is Mary. I'm the one on the far right. Andrea Chartier is on the left. She's our career counselor. In the middle is Carrie Taylor Kemp. Carrie works as employer relations in our office. And then below, we currently have four great students that do a variety of things in our office. Um, and you may be interacting with them if you submit documents for review. We like to share what we do in our office by sharing um, the Saints Roadmap, which is what we've put together that really describes the work that we do in our office, which falls in three distinct buckets, exploring, developing, and connecting. The first one is exploring, which is looking at who you are and your interest in your skills, values, and how they'll start to align with majors and careers. Because you all are in graduate school, many of you have already uh, worked through this area and you're on your route to your career path. But if that ever changes, you have questions, you wanna talk through anything, we're still available for that. The develop section, is really what you're working on today. These are your professional documents that you will be using um, for job search and for professional development in the future. So it would include things like resumes and cover letters, making sure you have a nice uh, headshot, a social, positive social media presence, um, working on your interview skills. Again, if you ever wanna submit documents for our office to review like a resume or a cover letter in the future, you can do that at the resumes at css.edu email address. Please know that once you graduate, you still qualify for our services. For the first three years after you graduate, unlimited, you can still reach out to us. After three years, three appointments, and if you need it more than that, we would refer you on to someone in the community. I did want to highlight one additional um, service that's on our website. It's a technology called Interview Stream. You'll see that in the lower right corner here. Um, this is a site that allows you from the comfort of your own home to practice your interviewing skills. So you can select a bank of questions on your own or one of the, the question sets that we've developed for you. It allows you to practice, to listen to yourself, to identify if you're talking long enough or too long. Are you giving enough details? Um, are there any distracting mannerisms that you'd like to um, eliminate before your real interview. So take a look at that. I think you'd enjoy that as a, a great resource for you in the future. The connect section, I want to point out that uh, two things today. One is job fairs. In the fall, we will have a Saints Health Career Fair. It will be virtual this year. We will make sure your class gets that information. We will have lots of healthcare organizations there that are interested in talking to you about um, current and future opportunities. Um, we generally offer that every year. So if you don't go this year, you could also go in future years. So keep your eyes and ears open for that. I believe it's November 12th. We're looking at the date um, as we speak. The other thing I want to highlight is Handshake. This is the site that we use to post all of our jobs and internships. So anytime an organization contacts us and says, we have this position, or we know you have an occupational therapy program, could you post this job? This is where we would direct employers, and this is where we would direct you as students. So the website's there. Um, as a current student, you're already in the system. The basics about you are in the system, and you can build out a portfolio, online portfolio there as well. So take a look at that. Let me know if you have any questions. 
Okay, so let's talk about um, the focus today, which is creating some professional documents. In your case, the main goal right now is to talk about portfolios. I always like to back up and, and discuss that there's lots of different types of writing that you might do as part of a job search or graduate school process. So resumes and curriculum vitas, most of you have done something like this before. This is the summary about you, the facts, the skills, um, your experiences, your education. If it's in a resume format, it's one to two pages. Curriculum Vita tends to be longer than that, but primarily used in academia. Cover letters is your narration that goes along with the resumes. So this is your chance to show um, the potential employer why you are particularly interested in them and their organization and the position uh, really shows your passion for the field. Personal statements, I won't talk about much, you've all done that, used to get into graduate programs. Portfolios generally are a collection of artifacts and documentations that really highlight your skills and experiences. Typically electronic, but sometimes are in a paper format as well. Um, it, the difference between like a resume and a portfolio is it gives you the opportunity to show learning and reflection and, a, and growth, which you don't always get in a resume. And it also provides the opportunity to have a visual representation of what would be in your resume. No matter which of those four types of documents you're working on, there's consistency um, between all of them and what is expected. One is that it's a reflection of your writing, which means that you have to proof and proof and proof. Um, second, if it's going to be good writing, you need to leave time for several drafts. And then third, it's always helpful to do reflection before you jump in and start to write. So don't feel like you have to dive right into the portfolio versus stepping back. What do I want to include? What's important? What's important for this position? When I think about portfolios, I found this image, which is perfect. I think about when we're in like kindergarten or first grade and we do these all about me posters. You probably remember those. You have a picture about yourself and a coloring and your family and your favorite this and favorite that. What you're talking about right now in your program is like the professional version of the all about me poster. So you're showing and telling about yourself. You're picking out your best work. Doesn't need to include everything you've ever done. Um, you want strong quality written material. You ask for feedback from people as you go along. And remember, it's a work in progress. You'll have things now, but you might edit, you might add, you might subtract in the future. As you're working on it, a few of my tips. First, um, it is very helpful for you to quantify so whenever possible, if you can include numbers, that's going to be really helpful. Adverbs and adjectives to describe so that you're not just giving an action verb, but you're actually providing some description along with that. Whenever possible, be specific, be concrete, um, be realistic when you're setting goals or talking about your professional development. Um, be aspirational, but realistic in those aspirations. Of course, it should be unique to you. You want to look through and make sure it doesn't look like everybody else's. So what makes you different? What kind of experiences, what kind of reflections uh, makes you unique or different? Always focus on results and really accomplishment focused. So with that, if you've worked on resumes in the past, you know we have a big focus on using action verbs. Uh, Greta has sent out some materials to you in advance, which includes our job search handbook. In the middle of that job search handbook has a whole list of action verbs. So if you find yourself, you're stuck on help, assisted and guided, and you can't think of other words, use this as a place to brainstorm. What else did I do? What could I focus on? What am I proud of? And language does matter, not just in the action verb you start the sentence with, but all the way through your written material. So this is why it's really important for you to be thoughtful when you're writing and ask for feedback because you don't always pick up on these words on your own until you have someone else look at the written material. When I'm talking about this, I'm talking about avoiding casual language or vague terms or cliches or abbreviations. So really focusing on professional language and communication. So the kind of things you'd avoid are phrases like I love or I got, sort of, good, satisfactory, you know, 
those types of things. If you submitted a personal statement to our office, if you're an undergrad at CSS, you might have found that we were circling these and giving you feedback on how to adjust that. So I want to give you specific examples so you can start to envision what I'm referring to here. So the first example I want to give you is in your portfolio, you might have a statement where you're you're starting off with a statement about your skills and experiences working with diverse populations. So you might do number one, I met with lots of different types of people, maybe you're referring to a clinical experience. But you can look at that and, and identify that that's too vague, right? So instead of met, you might change the word to served. Instead of lots, can you quantify it? I served over 50 and then be more specific. I served over 50 clients from diverse backgrounds, ages, and educational levels. That's pretty good. If you want to take it to the next level, it's not just that you did that, but to do that well, what did that look like? So in this case, you might, instead of saying served, you might say, I built rapport and tailored approach to effectively serve 50 clients from diverse backgrounds, ages, and educational levels. So I think you can easily see that development and how it adds so much more context and depth to it when you can quantify, provide adverbs and results. Two things I want you to keep in mind. One is if you have a statement like this and now you go into an interview, be prepared that they're gonna ask specific questions. This is great. Give me an example of how you tailored. What did that look like? As you serve clients from different populations, were there some that particularly challenged you and how did you learn um, to serve that population better? In a portfolio, you might have a statement like this and then you're going to show examples. Maybe you have a pie chart that shows all the different age groups that you've served or a, a graph of some kind that identifies um, diverse backgrounds of the clients that you've served. So you state it and then you're gonna show it in some way. Okay, let me give you a second example. I know in part of your portfolio, um, you're required to have some goal statements related to professional development. So again, you might have something like, I know I have a lot to learn and love the idea of being in a profession where things will be different every day. So while that may be true, it's sort of bland and generic. So instead of, I know I have a lot to learn, you might say, I'm committed to continued learning and growth and love the idea of being in, profession, in a profession that should be in a profession where things will be different every day. Or add more depth, I am committed to continued learning and growth and energized by a field where I can add depth and breadth to my practice through professional development. Now, again, in the portfolio, you'd have a statement like that, and then you might have like three columns, professional development, um, you've completed, training, certifications, extra education that you pursued. You might have a column of your goals for future, what's coming next. And in some cases, you might have a column where you provided professional development to others. So maybe you end up presenting at Occupational Therapy Association conference. You might include that as well. So you're crafting these really um, concrete, in-depth statements, and then you're showing through artifacts, through graphs, graphs, through visuals, what you mean by that. All the way through this, remember you really have to keep focused on your profession. Not that other things aren't important, but as you're working on a professional portfolio, you're thinking about the skills developed, not just what you did, but what skills were used. You're showing and you're telling, you're keeping it relevant. Here's the tricky part, the last two. You have to be concise, but descriptive at the same time. But you can see that in those bullet, bulleted examples that I shared where it does get longer when you add a little bit in, but it still is quite concise, usually just one or two sentences. So general formatting tips along with that, the reason why you have to be concise is it's really easy to look like this room, especially in a portfolio where you can be sort of all over the place. So what's your focus? What's the outline? How can you keep that consistent so it makes it easier for the reader? Think about using bullets and graphs and charts and tables. Do use some stylizing, meaning use some bolding and some underlining um, italics 
don't overuse it, but use it to guide the reader through your information. I believe it's going to be helpful for you to split content into smaller chunks. Once you get beyond, you know, two, three sentences, people stop reading, so you need to make it in smaller chunks. And don't try to be too cute and clever. I mean, you want to show your personality, um, but often too cute or clever doesn't work very well because it doesn't have your personality to go along with it. It's just a two-dimensional piece that someone's looking at. So avoid trying to be too cute or too clever. If you are feeling stuck at any time, I would encourage you, you can reach out to me or our office at any time, but really probably what you need is just some reflection time. Either writing, brainstorming with a friend, um, going for a walk with these questions in mind as you walk. The kind of things you're always thinking through is, what are you proud of? Um, what have you done really well? Where have you gotten really positive feedback? Maybe where you even did better than those that were around you. Where were times where you really felt engaged and energized at a heightened level? And how do you describe that experience? When did you have aha moments, the times when you really learned something new or saw things in a different perspective and how can you capture that? Um, and times where you made improvement. I mean, think about, you know, the, your beginning clinical to the end experience you're gonna have. You're gonna have lots of growth and development and how can you articulate that by reflection and then writing about it? I recommend, maybe realistic, maybe not, is that once you have a portfolio that you really try to keep updating it each semester. And you'll be happy with yourself if you do that because you're not trying to do it all at the end. You're doing a little bit every semester. Ideally, you even do it at the end of each month. What, what else do I need to include? What new reflections do I have? Are there new artifacts or documentation that I want to include? And finally, as you go through, Anytime you need help, that's what we're here for. So reach out to us. Maybe you're updating a resume, you're working on interviewing skills, you have a section of the portfolio that you're having a little difficulty writing and need feedback, reach out to us and we will attempt to help you out with that. Um, again, you can reach out to me directly as well. So it's manders1 at css.edu. I wish you well as you continue on this process and Happy creation of your portfolio. Thanks.